Last year, we had our hearts broken when it was announced that the National was canceled. Now, it's almost here, and this week, I've got 20 players whose cards are worth targeting next week in Chicago. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Market Movers video. My name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot, and this week, I'm going rapid fire. 20 players worth targeting at the Chicago National next week. I don't wanna keep you very long, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on each player, but I do wanna show you what their prices have been doing. I wanna show you our price movements, and then I've got some packing to do, so let's get right into it. All right, first up on the list, a guy that I really like, and a guy who's being overshadowed by his teammate, Bo Bichette. Bo Bichette is having a fantastic season, by all accounts, and a fantastic start to his career. In fact, he's breaking records. If you just Google Bo Bichette first 100 game records, you'll see that he's on pace to doing some really special things. So far this season, Bichette's batting 295 with 16 home runs, 61 RBIs, he's 15th in offensive war, and he's got 12 stolen bases. There's not a lot to dislike about Bichette. I'm waiting to see if the, the Blue Jays are gonna be able to squeak into the playoffs so that we can see what he and Vladdy are able to do in an actual playoff series. But here I pulled up two of his cards. I've got his 2020 Topps Chrome Refractor, and I've got his uh, Topps Chrome SP Variation, Pop 83 and Pop 608. When it comes to these 2020 players and the 2021 and probably any subsequent products, I'm mostly staying away from the really, really high population base cards, the base chrome, the base paper. If you really wanna go that route, usually it's pretty liquid, but it seems like there's a lot more risk in those high population cards. I like the pop count at 608 on this refractor and I really like it on the SP variation. And you can see that over the last 180 days, Bichette's cards are down somewhat significantly. If we scroll down, you can see down 33% and 24% respectively. I like Bichette for the long term. I like the flip potential. There's not a lot I don't like about Bo Bichette's cards. Hard to go wrong with a guy like Jordan Alvarez. When he plays on the team like the Astros, they're obviously having another great season. They could be poised to make another deep playoff run. And Alvarez is a big part of that. He won Rookie of the Year back in 2019. He won Rookie of the Year back in 2019. And this season, he's having a great year again. He's batting 287. He's got 17 home runs and 58 RBIs. He's right in the heart of that Astros lineup. And if the Astros make a deep run, he's going to be a big part of it. I like Jordan Alvarez. Another guy on my list, J.D. Martinez. And what I'm trying to do here is pick a couple of modern guys, a couple of players who are a little more established veterans, and then one or two players in each sport who are more from, you know, either retired or back from the 90s or earlier. So J.D. Martinez, he's had a pretty good career so far. He's had a few seasons where he was down or injured, but overall, so far up to 275, give or take a few home runs in his career. And the Red Sox are also like the Astros in first in their division. So far this year, Martinez is batting 305, which is especially impressive considering how remarkably low batting averages are across the league this season. He's got 19 home runs, 63 RBIs. He's got a 941 OPS, and he's got the 25th best offensive war in the league. And you can see what his prices have done over the last 180 days. 40 bucks back in mid-February, and actually all the way back down, you know, just around 50 right now. So you can see that they had this big run up, and now they've come all the way back down all in all over the last 180 days, basically flat, you know, up 13%. But I like a guy like JD Martinez, considering that his prices were up to $150 just a few months ago. Hard to go wrong, the Red Sox looking strong, and Martinez is a big part of the reason why. All right, last player on my baseball list, one of the all-time greats, one of the all-time great pitchers, Nolan Ryan. And you can see I pulled up his PSA 6 1968 tops card here, and it's you know, the trend line looks pretty much flat, but you can see a lot of highs and lows. Now, when you're buying cards from 1968, simply buying the slab doesn't tell the whole story. You really want to be able to look at that card in person. You want to look at the centering. Centering is, is a big part of what you're looking for in vintage. You want to be able to evaluate it in person, make sure the coloring is still good. So that's why you can see some of these big price swings, you know, week over week with a card like this. But overall, this card, you know, if we look at the price, it's actually uh, pretty much flat, straight flat over the last 180 days. But I like the upside of this card. I like the potential of Nolan Ryan's cards over time. He's definitely one of the all-time great pitchers. So I'm looking for Nolan Ryan cards at the National next week. All right, switching over to basketball. And like I said, I'm going to go with uh, one or two you know, current younger players, a couple of established players, and a veteran retired kind of Hall of Fame caliber player. 
So in this case, I've got Luka Doncic. If I'm thinking about modern players, Luka is the next guy up. He really is. He's the favorite, barring any catastrophic injuries or anything else. He just looks like the real deal. And over the last 180 days, you can see his cards have been on pretty much a free fall. So if we scroll down and I look at, these are pretty much his three biggest, his hollow, his silver, his select silver, and you can see 50%, 37%, and 39% how much these cards are down. I'm personally a bigger fan of picking up the hollows and the select because of the low population. I just think the upside is there over time on the super you know, low population on these cards. But Pop 2000 really isn't super high for his PSA 10 silver either. If you're looking for a specific card though, I'm personally going with one of these over the prism just because the population counts are so much lower. All right, next up, KD, Kevin Durant. Now, if you're one of our Market Mover members, my pick, my buy pick this last week was Kevin Durant. To me, this is an absolute no-brainer if you look at what his card prices have done. Last 180 days here, you can see down somewhat significantly after this huge run-up just a few months ago. The Nets were obviously the big favorites going into the playoffs to, to win the finals. They're going to be the Vegas favorites going into next season, barring any big like off-season moves or injuries or anything to their lineup. We saw what could happen with... Harden and Kyrie and KD all playing. They've got a lot of depth and a lot of great players around them. And if I scroll down, you can see massive, massive decline over the last 180 days, down 55%, down 61%. And if we were to go you know, to this high point, it would be even more of a decrease. Kevin Durant, definitely, definitely a buy. His legacy is already established, no brainer. All right, a guy who is retired but already has his legacy well established for years, Shaq and LeBron's running mate, but obviously one of the all-time greats in his own right, D-Wade. And you can see that his prices obviously had a big run-up a few months ago as well, and now are back down lower than they were 180 days ago. In fact, they're down anywhere from you know 14% on his refractor, which is very low population, to down 54% on his base tops chrome. And I really like the tops pristine cards as a sneaky play. The more I talk to really serious collectors, the more I hear a lot of people say, that Topps Pristine is one of their kind of personal cult favorite products. And personally, that's something I agree with completely. So if you if you can afford, you know, his Topps Pristine base, pop 155, just $200, that's definitely a card worth targeting for D-Wade. All right, next on the list, Mamba, rest in peace. We got Kobe Bryant. And what I did was I just pulled up, every time I go to 1996 in Kobe cards, I can't help but pull up some of my favorites. So what I did here was I just pulled up some of my personal favorites, along with the two most popular being his Tops and Tops Chrome. If you listen to me in the past, you know that I am a much bigger proponent and fan of the other cards other than his Tops and his Tops Chrome. Um, I just think they're more aesthetically pleasing. They're much lower population. So if I scroll down here, you can see I've got these sorted from greatest to least. You could pick up his Tops Chrome for $13,200. Personally, I like any of the Flare cards much better than that. Much lower populations, less than half the price. Same thing with the finest, and you can scroll down the list. But Kobe, overall, price is down pretty significantly on most of his cards over the last 180 days. Definitely, definitely worth picking up Kobe Bryant. Low risk, high return over time. Hold them for the next many years to come. Okay, next up, switching over to soccer. If you are a soccer fan, you probably watched the Euros, and what a devastating Euros for Kylian Mbappe and the French team. And what a devastating Champions League for PSG. Overall, you know, Mbappe hasn't had the greatest year, but he's still one of the absolute most talented, undeniably talented players in the world, especially one of the young players. Him and Erling Holland are really the two, you know, fighting for that title every single week. And if we see his card prices, obviously they had this massive, massive run up, up to $24,000 for his Panini sticker rookie card. And now they've come all the way down to $8,323 for that same card. So if you're a soccer person, I would certainly be looking to pick up Mbappe cards. You know, they're still up from 180 days ago, but if you go to say the last 60 days with Mbappe's snafus, they've been on somewhat of a free fall, not unlike some of the other players that we've looked at. Mbappe's a buy right now. All right, crossing over my personal all-time favorite GOAT player, Lionel Messi. I think he's, he's you know, obviously a no-brainer in terms of long-term investment very low risk, one of the most established players in the world and in history, and his cards have been going down as well. If we scroll down and we look at some of his Mega Cracks rookie cards, you can see that you know really low population on this Mega Cracks base number 71, just pop 35 on the PSA 9, and only one sale in the last 180 days on that card. 
But the rest of them, down 28%, down 55%, down 67%. And this is after they won Copa and he just re-signed with Barcelona. So Messi, I think now is the time to buy on a guy like him. All right, another guy I like, although maybe not necessarily the price point for his actual rookie cards, for his actual uh, Panini rookie cards, Pretty expensive, although very low population. So what I've done is I've included all of his cards here, including his rookie cards. Very low population on these uh, 2008 Panini cards, but you can see the price tags are pretty high. I'm not personally uh, sure I would invest $6,500 into Robert Lewandowski. That seems like a high, high price point, even though the population is very low, the market cap obviously very low. I still would rather put that much money into other players, but on some of these other cards, you know, down here, you can look at some of his World Cup silver, some of his 2016 Prism Euro silver, and some of these cards are down quite significantly over the last 180 days. There's rumors that he might be signing with Chelsea as a consolation prize because they moved on from negotiations for Wonder Boy. So if Lewandowski goes to the Premier League and goes to Chelsea, you can bet that his cards will see a significant spike. They just won Champions League. They're always contenders in the Premier League and adding a guy like him would only bolster their opportunity to continue to win. All right, last on my list for Pe is Pele. You know, if I'm looking back at an all-time legend, it's hard to go wrong with a guy like Pele, but I didn't pull up any of his cards. They are so low population. They sell infrequently. They're very often on you know PWCC auctions and, and other big auctions with other big consignment houses. But what I wanted to show you was the cards that we have in the database. You know, we went in and we added in several of his different rookies. It's hard to go wrong with any of these. So if you're interested in Pele cards, use our Market Movers app, go to marketmoversapp.com and sign up to become a member or download it in the iOS store or on Android. And you can easily look up all of Pele's rookie cards. You can also use the Sports Card Investor app, which is totally free to look up his cards and see what's for sale. All right, switching over to football. You know, it's almost football season. I'm really excited. I can't wait to read NFL memes on Instagram all season long. And Peyton Manning, you know, this is another no brainer. I still think that his cards are somewhat criminally undervalued to use a phrase that gets thrown around a lot. And if I scroll down and see what's been going on with his prices, you can see many of his cards are down significantly over the last 180 days. You saw this big run up back in February and then they've come way back down. And the funny thing is when his cards were kind of going up in this direction, that's when I felt like they were finally starting to go in the right direction. You know, take a look at his 1998 Topps Chrome base card po population 1,243. Compare that to Kobe's PSA 10 Topps Chrome rookie card, which was over 13,000. You know, Manning, I, honestly, I would think of Manning in terms of all-time great NFL players at about the same level as Kobe in terms of all-time great NBA players. And he's a fraction of the cost. So when I see, you know, prices like this, to me, that's really hard to go wrong. I would definitely be targeting Peyton Manning. All right, another one of my all-time favorite players, Calvin Johnson, Megatron, just like Barry Sanders, ripped my heart out when he retired early. And I can't say that I blame him. One of these days, I am hoping that the Lions will get it together and be able to keep a really strong franchise rolling. We can keep hoping for that. Dan Campbell's the next great hope. Uh, but over the last 180 days, much like many of these players, Megatron's price is also down. If you scroll down, you see not down 9% on his Topps Chrome base card, down 23% on his Bowman Chrome, and down 27% on this beautiful refractor Pop 57. One thing I wanna point out, go and compare Justin Jefferson's PSA 10 Prism Silver card to this card. Very similar price, Jefferson's might be around 1100, similar population, but Jefferson's is definitely gonna go up. There's something wrong with that picture. Which player are you gonna choose? One of the greatest, Definitely one of the greatest, probably one of the top five greatest wide receivers of all time, or a guy who had a good rookie season and may not ever do anything again. Probably will, but he's got a long way to go to catch up to Calvin Johnson. Buy this card over the Justin Jefferson. All right, next on our list, active player, but obviously, uh, you know, st still has room to improve his historical stats and to win more championships, potentially Russell Wilson. Um, Seattle's in a really tough division. We've got a battle with the Rams, the 49ers, and the Cardinals, all who are viable playoff teams this season. But his cards, again, they had this little run-up. I said I was buying them a few months ago. I still am. Those cards have actually gone down since I purchased them. I am not panicking whatsoever. In fact, I might be interested in picking up more Russell Wilson because the price is right. They're not down a terribly huge amount, but it is before the season, and I do think that if the Seahawks start winning, like they always do, 
his cards are going to go back up in price. Russell Wilson is definitely a guy worth picking up. All right, last football player on my list, another wide receiver, Tyreek Hill. Chiefs are, you know, one of the favorites, split favorites with the Bucks again to go back to the Super Bowl. Tyreek Hill is a huge part of that. And I'm going to just scroll down and show you. I mentioned Justin Jefferson, okay? Now, this is about four to five times the population of Jefferson's Prism Silver right now. But $244 compared again to like $1,100 for Justin Jefferson. I'm not trying to pick on Justin Jefferson. He's a great young player. His prices are ridiculous. I would definitely pick up four of these Tyreek Hill Silvers before I would pick up a Justin Jefferson Silver. Hill has phenomenal career stats so far. He's, he's freakishly fast. You know, even if he starts to lose a step, he could become a very viable slot receiver for many years to come, a la Julian Edelman and, you know, other players, Wes Welker. It's hard to go wrong with a guy like Tyreek Hill, one of Patrick Mahomes' favorite weapons, and should be there for several more years getting the ball. All right, last four picks. I'm going to go round robin to a few different sports. I've got hockey, I've got tennis, I've got golf, and I've got MMA. Let's start out with hockey. The the uh, Kirill, the Thrill, Kaprizov, uh, you know, obviously he won the Calder Memorial Trophy this last year. Super talented young player, 24 years old, and just popped 42 on his young guns base. If you're prospecting hockey, you can see his cards come down 67% in the last 180 days. So if you're high on young hockey talent, you could be eyeballing Kirill the Thrill at the National. All right, moving over to tennis. One of my biggest regrets, simultaneously biggest wins and biggest regrets. A couple years ago, I was snatching up Roger Federer uh, PSA 9 and PSA 10 cards on ComC and on eBay for like 30 bucks a piece, 50 bucks a piece. I picked up a few Nadals, not enough. Uh, I passed on a couple of these glossies to 100. And most notably, I passed on a few Serena Williams cards that I had seen for sale. If I scroll down, you know, my recommendation here in terms of a buy is Nadal and Federer. Serena's still up and her prices are huge, massively high. And this just goes to show you, you know, I guess how people feel about American athletes, about female athletes, about, you know, iconic female athletes. Serena Williams obviously has, you know, a, a very compelling story in so many ways and has been such a prominent figure in women's sports. So her price, $26,500 for her PSA 10 Pop 20 Glossy to 100. Compare that to uh, Roger Federer's Glossy to 100. Last sale back in June, $776. Population 65, still not astronomical, and obviously the cards are numbered to 100. But this card's down 79%. Serena's card is up. If you spot one of these Federer's at the National, grab it. All right, Tiger Woods, what a roller coaster it's been for Tiger Woods. Obviously, you know, we're all relieved that he's okay after that uh, terrifying car accident. And it's also been a bit of a roller coaster with his prices. And if you were to go back even further, you would see that his car prices have gone up and down and up and down. If I scroll down and I look at what they've done over the last 180 days, down 61% on his SP Authentic autograph to 900. Low population on these in the PSA 10 and PSA 9. Same thing for his Sports Illustrated for Kids card. You know, you know, I'm not as big of a fan of this card. I just remember getting the magazine and ripping these things out. To me, it's a little bit more gimmicky than the cards that were actually pack pulled, especially an autograph. So I wouldn't personally be chasing these, but they do have their place in the marketplace and a lot of people are a big fan of them. I currently own one of these BGS 10 Pristines. If you're gonna go for the upper deck base, I would definitely go after the BGS 10 over the PSA 10, which is a super high population. This stuff was mass printed. So go for the BGS 10 or even the black label if you can afford it, or try to pick up one of the autos if you have the cash to do it. And last on my list, I am not by any means an MMA UFC expert. I've been learning a little bit more from Parker, our director of data, but John Jones, definitely one of the two or three greatest fighters of all time. And you can see that his card prices have come down over the last 180 days, and especially over their high point, back in March. A couple of key cards here is 2009 Topps UFC Round 2 Autograph, which is his first auto, and his Topps UFC Round 2 Base card. If you're interested in picking up MMA cards, look for John Jones. His legacy is established. One of the all-time greats. Hard to go wrong. All right, so just to round this out, here's the list of players that I highlighted today, and you can see their prices, what they've done over the last 60 days specifically. And I'm scrolling down the list, anywhere from down 49% on JD Martinez, to just up 1% on Robert Lewandowski cards. 
And if I scroll up, you can see we have this awesome new feature on price movements to filter specifically on rookie cards. And so that's what we're looking at, graded rookie cards, put in all the players. This is my target list at the National. I'll be looking for deals on these specific players. All right, that was fun. I've got my target list for the National. And if you're interested in signing up for Market Movers so that you can do similar research and store your target lists, go visit marketmoversapp.com. Like I said, you can download the new app. It's free to try on Android and on Apple. You can also download the Sports Card Investor app where you'll find all the same data, smaller data sets with you know card rankings based on sales volume and price. As always, I hope you'll like this video. Leave your comments down below. Hopefully, if you're going to be at the National, let me know. I'd love to shake your hand and meet you face to face. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button and hit the little bell icon. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next week.